Noise scares fish! Look at my kayak! It's gonna run them out of the gate! Whoa! Sea Deck wants $128 for their traction kit for this native ultimate 14 and a half foot kayak. It also muffles noise, which is why I would want it. But I'm gonna show you how to do it for seven bucks this week on Kayak Hat. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Now, let's get on with it. The Sea Deck traction kits are really pretty cool. Here's their main page, and you can see they have cutouts to match exactly everything in your kayak. And when you go back to the page for your kayak, they give you the plan for how all those inserts would lay out in your boat. Fellow YouTuber Heath Holland and I have been exchanging emails back and forth over the last couple months trying to find the right inexpensive solution to this issue. Now, I just hate this noise, so I've got to cover my center console, and I also want to protect back where my tackle box is in the rear, because that's where I generate my noise. Now, what I came up with was to grab some of these floor mats from Walmart. You get four. I got these four for five bucks on sale. I think they were normally eight bucks. And I'll, I'm going to cut these to fit into the center console. And the challenge, of course, is how to adhere it to polypropylene. So I'm betting that this Loctite spray adhesive that, it, that advertises compatibility with polypropylene is going to help me stick it down. But I'm not going to rely on that 100%. I know from experience with these foot pads that came with my kayak, that it's the edges that pull up. So I need to reinforce those edges beyond what this adhesive is going to give to me. So what I've done is I recognize that GoPro uses VHB tape on all of their mounts. This stuff isn't gonna come off. And so I bought a roll of that from Amazon. I'll throw a link below and I'll use that around all the edges to make sure that each edge is firmly adhered to my boat and isn't going to turn up. So how'd this work out? Well, I'm not happy with it for two reasons. First, these car mats end up being pretty heavy and I think they added a lot of weight to my boat that requires me to exercise a lot more to move forward. The second is while this middle version of the Loctite spray adhesive uh, is holding pretty good in the middle, there's no movement here on these mats, that VHA, VHB tape did not really work out. In my mind, the optimum is that this stuff should not come up. While that Loctite is holding good here in the middle, it's the edges where it's going to come up and peel back, and that's where I use this VHB tape but it's not sticking in the damp environment to the bottom of my kayak here. And the reason that I folded this over is I didn't want to accidentally uh, push it up, causing it to come up like this. So my bottom line is I'm going to call this hack a fail for weight and adhesion. And I'm going to try a different option. For option two, I'm going to follow one of my subscribers' advice, a guy named Heath Holland, and he found one of these cheap yoga mats at Walmart that costs underneath eight bucks. And they're a lot lighter than the heavy set of car mats that I installed before. So I'm going to pull these up because they're not adhering that well anyway. And I'm going to redo it. But I'm going to take a different approach to adhesion this time. Instead of using the 200 level of adhesive, I'm bumping it up to the 300 level, which is heavy. And it does claim that it bonds, maybe it'll stick better to this. Second, I'm going to use contact cement around the edges because this advertises it bonds on rubber. And that was one of my problems. I know this works because I've had to reapply uh, the contact cement to my foot pads 
that came with the boat, and they're sticking pretty well. They haven't come up after uh, two seasons after I did that repair. So, step one, I'm going to pull out this failed solution right here. And as you can see, it's going to come out pretty easily because this VHB tape did not really stick very well. I've got all the rubber mats out, and they're definitely a lot heavier than this yoga mat. I think this is about twice as heavy. Well, this is another one of those videos where I destroy my boat so you don't have to take the risk with yours. So the first step here is going to be to remove this yoga mat and lay it out on this high point on my hull. This is pretty nice. It's one piece instead of the four pieces I had to use piecing together that uh, truck mat and it covers plenty of my boat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over so I have one clean edge that I don't have to cut and then I'll just have to cut on this side. Now that I have this laid down, I'm kind of marking the edges with this sharpie where I want to cut it. I'm using the spurring strip to put underneath the mat so when I use the razor knife it won't be cutting into the concrete floor. I want it to go into the wood. Now that I've cut off the excess, it's even lighter than this heavy truck mat. Bad idea. What I'm going to do now is lay it back down. And what I want to do is draw a line along the, along the perimeter. Because I've got to put this contact cement on both sides. So I'll draw the line, I'll put the contact cement down, and then I'm going to spray it with the 300 level Loctite adhesive. And hopefully it'll go down nice and smooth and I'll finally have a soundproof kayak with option two. I'm ready to start putting down the contact cement. I've drawn the line and I've put some newspaper down to prevent overspray for when I do the adhesive spray on the top. My logic on doing the adhesive is pretty simple. According to the instructions on this contact cement, you need to let this dry for about 15 minutes here as well as on the edge of the mat and then then you put it down so I'll put this on first because it gives me plenty of time and then about uh, 13 minutes in I'll lay down the spray adhesive here on the top because this says it would like to have about a minute on both sides for the maximum adhesion so now it's just a matter of popping this open and taking the little brush out and laying down a layer of the contact cement along the perimeter of this as well as my mat. Open up the garage door to get some good ventilation through here. When you put that contact cement down, you don't want to breathe the fumes. I've been shaking this thing for a while. Now I'm ready to put it down, let it sit for a minute, and then I can lay the mat down, and hopefully I get it right. It would have been easier to do it in sections, but I kind of want the entire one piece down there, and I'm willing to accept it if it's a little bit cat corner. So, let's get the spraying. Okay, I'm going to hold it up here, bring it back, line it up on my line. I think it came out pretty good. Just that one little area back here I had to fix and right there, but I think that's going to be a nice smooth surface that's going to absolutely deaden the sound when I'm scraping bait containers around and things like that. Let me give you the top view on it. So here you can see what it looks like. It's looking pretty sweet. Put the seat back in. Put all my stuff back in there, and I'll be able to sneak up on those redfish. Heath got the yoga mat that had the pattern on it and was able to match it up as he did the cutouts. He used the C-Deck plan to get the dimensions. If you've got a better way to do this, please throw it in the comments below so we can all learn from it. Thanks. And thank you, Heath Holland, again, for keying me to the yoga mat instead of those heavy truck mats. Take care.